Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to remove a background in Photoshop. Removing a background is one of those key skills that you have to have if you want to become proficient in Photoshop. Virtually all compositing image manipulation is going to have as your first step removing a background. So in this tutorial, we're going to go through six projects, and in each one, we're going to remove the background. And through the course of it, I'm going to show you a lot of tips, tricks, and methods that you can use to remove backgrounds in Photoshop. Now, if you want to follow along, I have included all the files that I use in a link in the description of this video. So go ahead and download those. In the first two projects, I'm just going to show you the basics of removing a background. What are the two steps involved and how we can influence those two steps with the tools that are in Photoshop. All right, let's go to file open. The first file I'm going to open is this May file. And let's look at the simplest way to remove a background. So first, I'm just going to take my layer and make it a normal layer, meaning not a locked background layer on which you cannot have transparency. Next, I'm just going to add a solid color layer, and this is just going to be a reference layer so that I'm going to put it behind here so we can see which parts of this background are transparent and show through this. Next, I'm going to go to my Properties panel here. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see these quick actions. And the first one is Remove Background. So let's go ahead and click on that. And there you go. Photoshop has removed the background. So what it's actually done here is it's first it's made a selection of our subject. And then it's turned that selection into a mask. And if I option, hold down option and click on the mask, you can see that mask. So everything that's black is not showing. And then everything that's white is showing. So let's option click on the mask again. And I'm just going to zoom in here. And you can see that there are a few problems. This blue part here should not be there. This blue should not be there this blue shouldn't be there and there's a few spots here of orange that are missing so i would say that this is basically 90 percent there so the last 10 percent we're going to have to do by hand now to do this all we have to do is select our mask and then fill in those areas with either black for the areas that we don't want showing and then white for the areas that we do want showing. Now we can do that with various tools here. Um, we could use our quick selection tool and select our actual color information here and then select this part here and try to get this selection like this in here. and then click back on our mask here and then go to edit fill and then fill with our foreground color which is black now the shortcut for all that i'm going to just undo here the shortcut for filling in with your foreground color is just hold down option and hit delete or backspace so there you go that would be one way to do it another way to do it without having to go back and forth between these is to simply use a uh, marquee tool here and just draw around the area that you want. So here I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to draw through to here, around here, through to here, and then my mask is still selected. And you can see by the little white outline here that it's still selected. I'm going to do Option Delete and then fill that with black. And then we can come down here. Now, one trick I want to show you with the marquee tool is if you click and start dragging and then hold down the option key, you're going to see that your marquee tool actually changes to the polygonal lasso. And the benefit of this is you can click, 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 and click. But then if you want to start freehand drawing, you just click and start drawing and it's not going to 
it's going to operate like the normal lasso tool rather than the polygonal lasso tool. And then if I either let go of option or let go of my mouse, it's going to close that selection. Because I still have my mask selected, I can just do Option Delete. Okay, and then coming over here, these areas we want to fill in. So I could do the same thing, but rather than selecting the background, I'm selecting the part of the tangerine that I want included. And then rather than filling in with the background or foreground color, I want to fill in with the background color. And to do that, rather than holding down Option and then Delete or Backspace, I'm going to hold down Command and then hit Delete or Backspace. And you can see that filled in with white. I could also go to my brush and just go to a soft round brush, either of these, and then with black as my color, I can hold down Command or Control and Option and slide left and right, top and bottom to adjust my diameter and hardness of the brush. And then just paint in with white here what I want included in my mask. And then I can hit X to make black my foreground color here and then paint what I want excluded. And generally when you're working with masks, these are kind of the methods that you're gonna be using. So you're either gonna be painting with a paintbrush or making various selections and then filling those selections with either white or black, depending on whether you want it shown or not shown. And that's generally how you work with masks and also the basic steps of removing a background. So make a selection and then turn that selection into a mask. Now, because we use the quick action, this mask was created for us by the quick action. So I wanna quickly show you how you're gonna make a mask if you're not using the quick action. And for this, I'm gonna use a really simple one. Um, this, I wanna cut out the background, and this is a simple circle. So I don't need any fancy selection tools. I'm just gonna use my elliptical marquee tool and make a circle selection. Now, if you've ever tried to use this tool, you may find it a little counterintuitive because you kind of have to work out, okay, so the corner of this plate is probably somewhere around here and kind of draw a circle down and hope, hope that you land, land it perfectly. Now that one, I kind of landed perfectly, but I usually never do. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks here for how you can use this um, circular or elliptical marquee. So first off, try to aim for the center of where you want to make your selection. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball where the center of this plate is. I'm gonna guess that it's about right here, and then I'm gonna start dragging. Now, if I hold down the option, it's gonna start dragging from that center point. And you can see here, as I drag out, it's making it to the size of the plate. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna restrain this selection so that it's always a perfect circle. So while I'm still holding down Option, I'm also gonna add Shift. And now you can see that the circle is staying circle. So now as I make it bigger, you can see that I wasn't quite in the center when I first started making the marquee. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it just about right and then what I can do now is reach over and with a third finger, I'm gonna hold down the space bar. And what the space bar allows me to do is move the entire selection. So now with the entire selection movable, I can position it right where I want it. And that would be right about there. And as I do this, I'm actually noticing that it's probably one or two pixels too big. So I can let go of the space bar and now because it's recentered, as I make it bigger or smaller, it's using that new location as its center. So I can make it a tiny bit smaller and then let go. Now, if I want to nudge it, maybe a couple pixels this way or a couple pixels down, I can do that just using my arrow keys. Make sure you're still on a selection tool and not on the move tool. 
otherwise it'll actually move pixels, which you don't want. You just want your selection to move. So with a selection tool selected here, I'm just going to use my left arrow key, nudge it a couple pixels, and then maybe a couple pixels down. So there you go. And then in order to make my mask, I'm going to click on this icon here. And clicking on that icon, you can see my background is now removed. And I can put in whatever new background I want. In this case, I could do something like a pattern and maybe go to a wood pattern in the background here. Maybe make that a bit bigger and move this to underneath. And then for this, I might just add a drop shadow real quick to this plate. And there you go, we've now changed the background in our image. So in summary, the basic steps for removing a background are make a selection and then take that selection and turn it into a mask. And in your mask, whatever background you want removed is gonna be black and your subject or whatever you wanna keep is gonna be white. And that's in essence, how to remove a background in Photoshop. Now, these last two projects have been relatively easy backgrounds to remove. What I wanna do now is dive into more complicated or intricate selections. And for that, we're gonna dive into the Select and Mask workspace of Photoshop. All right, let's go to File Open. And this time I'm gonna open the file called Chad. And this is an image of a burger and it's obviously a lot more challenging than the tangerine or the plate. Um, and one of the larger challenges that we're gonna have to face here is that our background has soft focus. So if we were just cutting out this burger, it would actually be a little bit easier, but I wanna cut out these two burgers and the cutting board and have those in my image as well, which means our mask is gonna have to vary from in focus to out of focus. So first, let's go ahead and make a basic selection that we're gonna use in our select and mask work mode. So we could just go into select and mask and start selecting here, but my general workflow is I first make a selection using the tools in Photoshop, and then I go into select and mask to refine it. So in this case, let's go ahead and select our quick selection tool um, with this, you're going to start painting over the area that you want. And then Photoshop is going to work out based on where you're painting, what you want to select. So this is an AI driven tool, meaning it's using artificial intelligence to figure out what it is that you want to select. Um, I found that it works pretty well if there is good visual contrast in the image. If there isn't, sometimes it won't do so well. and that's when you have to start correcting it by hand, but that's kind of expected. So with my basic selection made, I'm now gonna go into Select and Mask. And this is gonna bring me into the Select and Mask workspace. Now this is a separate workspace from the usual workspace of Photoshop. You have a new set of tools. You don't have your layer palette here. You instead have all the properties for your select and mask workspace. Now you have various view modes, but the, the two most important ones here are overlay and then black and white. So with overlay, you can adjust here how strong the overlay is. You can also adjust the color of the overlay. So, you know, if you're using for this image, for example, I wouldn't want to use something that's too similar to the color of the objects because then I can't really see where my selection ends and where the object starts. So I'd want to use something like this and then here you can adjust the strength of that overlay. So this is my preferred method but then as I'm working if I want to see the mask I can hit K on the keyboard that's going to show me a black and white representation of my mask and then I can hit V on the keyboard to take me back to my view mode. And you can see here, these letters and parentheses are single letter shortcuts for the various view modes. If you like some of these other modes better, you can always use those instead. Personally, 
V and K are the only two that I use. Okay, so with that done, what we could do here, I want to quickly cover the tools that you have available. The first one is Quick Select. So this allows you um, either to add or subtract to your selection. And this tool operates the same as the Quick Select tool within the Photoshop workspace. So here, if I put minus, I might deselect this background burger and just have my foreground burger in the selection. So something like that. Um, this next tool is the Edge Refine, and this allows us to paint over an edge. And Photoshop will try to determine what should be in the selection and what shouldn't be. And you, you can see here as I painted it, it actually did a really good job of making my mask fade into the background in a similar way that the original object did because it's out of focus. So for the edge of elements like this, this might be a good tool, even though the tool is actually designed for hair and fur, you could use it for something like this. Now it's done a halfway decent job, but we might try some of these other tools. Okay, the next one is just a standard brush. So similar to if we're working in Photoshop, this allows us to brush into our mask. So if I'm on K, you can see as I add to my selection or add to my mask, it's going to turn it white. And if I go to the minus, it's going to paint black. So this is basically just a black and white paintbrush. Next, if we go back to V, we have the object selection tool. This allows us to select objects. So in this case, if I wanted to add these back, I could hold shift and just add that back to our selection. Or if I wanted to minus something from my selection, I could do that. So that's what those are. And then this is our lasso tool. And you also have your polygonal lasso tool here. And just in the same in Photoshop, here you can make a selection. Now one thing to note is that this lasso tool has no feathering and no anti-aliasing. So just be aware of that when you're using it. Um, if I use it on this edge, for example, and the, the option trick that I showed you on the lasso tool works here as well, but you'll see that this has absolutely no anti-aliasing. It is a very solid black and white. There's no gradation like there is here. So that that is one uh, limitation to this tool when you're using it. I generally only use it for things like this where it's not close to an edge or if the edge is very sharp in my original image. Okay, so let's go back to V. That gives you an idea of all these tools. I will show you this refine edge because this is probably the most important tool in the select and mask workspace. It's the only one that's not also available in the normal Photoshop workspace. So the quick selection tool, the normal brush, the object selection, and the lasso are all available in the normal Photoshop workspace, but this refine edge is not. Okay. The other thing I want to show you here is some of the tools over down here. So first we have the refine mode. So this determines whether you're using the object aware or color aware when it's refining your selection. And generally I just keep this on the default. However, if you have an image where there's a very good color differentiation between the background and the foreground, you might want to change this to color aware. Um, but we're going to keep this on object aware. You can kind of see the slight differences that occur. I'm going to put this on K so you can see it even better. If I switch between these two, you can see some of the changes taking place there in our selection. OK, so let's go back to V. The next is edge detection. So this kind of similar to the way the refine edge does is 
the bigger you make this radius, the more it's going to look for those edges. And I find this works really well when I have objects that are out of focus. So in this case, I'm going to hit K again and just see what happens to this edge here and to this edge here, which are out of focus in my original image. The more I make this large, the more these actually look like they should, meaning they have that fade. And there is a sweet spot somewhere here, um, probably around here is a sweet spot. And you'll notice that as I change this, we're getting different abnormalities. That's one thing you kind of have to be aware of when you're using the kind of smart selection tools in Photoshop is that they aren't perfect and um, you kind of have to play with them to see what gives you the best results. Okay, next is smart radius. Um, this used to be a really great tool. I have noticed, unfortunately, that at lower radiuses, you get these weird step-like things when you're using smart radius and also edge detection. So whereas I used to always have like two pixels of edge detection, uh, generally now I generally use the edge detection only when I am going to use it a lot. So for like large pixel amounts like this, um, because I find that it, it creates errors at smaller radiuses. I'm hoping that that's something that Photoshop will fix in the future. Okay, next we have these global refinements. This allows you to smooth your selection. Um, you can also feather your entire selection. So here you can see the feather. Um, you can also add contrast. So you can see there. And you can also shift the entire edge in or out from your object. And I'm using the uh, black and white mode here just to make these changes more obvious. Generally, as I'm working in here, I'm going to be in this mode. But that's what all these global refinements do. And then finally, here, you can decontaminate colors. So this is if you're working with a green screen or something that's on a strong colored background. This will help to decontaminate the colors. Generally, I prefer to do this in my Photoshop layer stack rather than doing it through here. But if you're working on something uh, where, you know, a green screen or something, this can come become very handy. And then your output, you can either output it to a selection or to a layer mask. And you have other options here. You can also output it to a new layer, a new layer with a layer mask, or what have you. Um, if you want to skip creating a layer mask, you could just do that right here. Um, personally, I just keep this on the default and then just create my layer mask as a second step. But that's up to you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reset all this. And let's go ahead and just select subject. And then I'm going to use my quick select to select these two in the background here and also the cutting table. So just like that. So now I have everything that I want in my selection. The next thing I'm going to do is just turn on this edge detection until my background is nice and smooth. I'm quite happy with that. The next thing I want to do is just make sure that this is properly selected. Now, for this, because it's a pretty straight line, I think my easiest tool is just going to be using a brush. And the reason I'm using a brush instead of a lasso is because with the brush, I do have that feather. This knife is not totally in focus, so I can't use this because it has no feathering. But with my brush, I can just add a little bit a feather to it, not too much, so maybe 90%. And then I can just click up here, kind of to the top of it, hold down shift and click down here. And because it's a straight line, it's just going to make a nice straight line there. Just like that. I can hit K and look if there's any anomalies. 
And you can see here that this edge has a little bit of gray in it and it shouldn't, so we'll just paint that out. And then also this white, this should just be white there. And also there and there. And let's go back here. So I'm gonna hit V again, go to my other view mode. I think that looks really good. Let's hit OK. And then I can just add a mask and there you go. So now I have that variable focus actually accounted for in my mask. You can see that this edge is sharp and then this edge here is actually quite soft and this edge here is quite soft. So that's how you can extract the background when you have some soft focus. And that also kind of gives you the basics of the select and mask. Let's go ahead and close this one out. I'm going to go to File Open. And the next one we're going to work on is this Ahmed file. And let's go straight into the Select and Mask, Select Subject. We're just going to work on it directly in here. So this is a, a much better use case example for the Refine Edge. You can see here we've got these feathers and we have a very hard selection around them. But in our original image, you can see that it's kind of soft and wispy. And for a good selection, you want that soft and, wif and wispiness so that whatever image you're putting behind it kind of shows through, which it would in real life. So what we're gonna do here is go on our Refine Edge brush, make it a bit smaller here, and we're gonna paint over this edge where the background and our subject meet. And right away, you can see what that's doing. If I hold down K, you can see that that is nice and has a lot of variation in it in terms of grays and so forth. And let's go ahead and paint the rest of this. Okay, so if we hit K, we can see that that's done a pretty darn good job. I do see a few problems. Uh, one is it got rid of some of our bird here. So I'm just gonna go with my quick selection tool and try to get some of that back in here. And you can see, um, just as I was doing that, you could see some of the artifacting that this tool is giving me. Um, and that's something that I constantly run into when using the AI-driven tool. So this is an AI-driven tool. This is an AI-driven tool. This is AI-driven. And then this and this are very manual. So if I'm having problems with the manual tools, uh, or sorry, the AI-driven tools, I'll go to one of the manual ones, like just the normal brush tool. I can go on K and just start painting by hand kind of adjusting my feather so that I leave my edges there nice and feathered. So something like this. You can also see the artifacting there. Now I'm gonna get rid of this, so I'm just gonna hold down Option and just paint this out. I don't need it in my selection. And let's hit V again. And I'm pretty happy with that. Let's try, I'm gonna go hit K so I can see what the actual selection is doing. I'm gonna try some smart radius, see what happens. And I'm gonna zoom in on some of these edges. Just kind of turn this up. And I'm getting a few artifacts down here, but not so bad. Let's turn it back down. And it looks like right around 31 pixels, I'm not getting any artifacts. So I'm gonna leave it at that. 
and then hit OK, and then add my mask. I'm going to make a few corrections to my mask inside Photoshop. So right away you can see we've got a little bit too much transparency in the nose there, and in this hand, and maybe also in some of these feathers. And if we option click on our mask, we can see where those problems are coming from. Um, one trick here is to go on your brush tool and just select kind of a soft brush like this. And then instead of putting it on normal, put it on overlay. Now when I paint with white, it's only going to make whatever is more than 50% white is going to turn white. And everything that's less than 50% white is going to either be made bright, but everything that's black is not going to be affected. So that's a nice way to like paint those edges without being too worried about what happens if you paint in the black, right? So here I'm painting white, and because this is black and my brush is overlay, nothing is happening to it. But if I paint in these areas that need more white, you're going to see they turn more white. Same thing with the black. If I want to paint in an edge that's not black enough, I can switch my black, uh, brush to black and just kind of paint in that edge. And it won't turn the white black, but it will make the dark grays white. So there you have it. I'm pretty happy with that mask. We've now cut out that background. All right, next, I'm going to show you one more just to finish out the select and mask method. And this one, I want to cut out this green background and leave the squirrel intact. Let's try select subject. All right, let's go to select the mask. But you can see right away the problems that this has. Let's try making this radius really big. You can see that actually it did a great job on the edges of the fur, although it's not doing a great job down here on the feet, nor here on the face area. Let's go to V, and we're just going to kind of clean some of this up by hand. So first I'm going to go to the brush tool here, make it a bit smaller, and just paint out this area here, and then paint in this part here that should be part of the selection. And I'm going to use the refine edge here and just paint over this green spots there and there. And then maybe also try to get just a little bit more of this back in here. All right, now I'm going to go back to K. And with my normal brush, just going to clean up a little more. Here you can see some of that artifacting taking place. I'm just going to get rid of that toe. Nobody will know. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's hit OK, and then we can add our mask. And then we can go in here, and that mask looks pretty darn good. So in those projects, we use the Select and Mask workspace to make our selections and then turn those into a mask. And the reality is that for most projects, the Select and Mask workspace is going to be your best option. However, there are scenarios where Select and Mask Workspace just doesn't work. And in those cases, you want to be able to make a selection manually. Now, there's two primary ways of doing this. One is simply painting or drawing your selection by hand. And I'm going to show you that in the next project. And then after that, I'm going to show you how you can use image information or channel information in your file to dictate what your selection's going to be. And those two, I would say, are the kind of 
alternate methods for making selections if you're not going to use the select and mask workspace. So let's dive into those next. So in this one, I could try the select and mask. Let's go ahead and select subject. And actually, before I do any of that, I'm going to add a solid color just as a reference here. We'll make this kind of a green color. And then I'm going to make a copy of this. And let's go ahead and just run the quick action. OK, so here you can see the issues. Um, we're missing parts of the car here. Um, we're missing part of the wheel there. This edge, which should be nice and straight because this is a nice piece of metal, has a lot of noise on it. This wheel has a lot of noise. We're missing part of the back bumper here. Um, in fact, we're missing the entire back light. Um, we also have a few anomalies here. We've got this extra bit on the ceiling. So a whole bunch of issues that the AI selection tool in Photoshop just didn't do a great job with. So for something like this, trying to use the lasso tool on a real nice long curve like this, well, trying to do it by freehand is going to be really rough. And if you do it with the polygonal lasso, you're going to have a bunch of lines that you don't want, right? We're getting these corners here. So my preferred method with something like this is to hand draw it with the pen tool. Now, before I even start doing the hand drawing, I do see some areas here where it's really hard for me visually to see where the car ends and the background starts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a curve layer here I'm really going to bump up these darks and bump up the contrast here just so I can see these dark areas under here a little bit better. And I'm just going to leave this layer up here. I can turn it on and off as I work. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my pen tool down here, make sure it's on path, not shape. And then I'm going to start drawing around the car. So I'm going to zoom in here and for any selection where you just cannot get the AI selection tools in Photoshop to work in your favor, you always can default back to using the pen tool. This is what back in the day we used for the majority of selections before the AI tools. And the beauty of the pen tool is that it allows you to make nice curved lines like this um, because it's all vector based that are completely resolution independent. And you can then use this path to create your selection. So I'm going to go all around the car here and I'm just following the lines. And the way the pen tool works is you add an anchor point. And then if you start dragging rather than letting go after your left mouse click, it'll make these handles. And these handles influence the curve of your line. So you can do this. And we're just going to keep drawing around here. Kind of, you kind of have to practice to get good at these lines. But generally what you're trying to do is make as few anchor points as you need. Obviously, once you've made an anchor point, let's say you don't want this anchor point to influence, what you can do is hold down, just click on this, hold down option, click on that and it'll cut off the little tail. That way the next one you make won't be influenced by it like this. And then also, if you single click without dragging, it's going to make an anchor point that does not have any handles. So that'll act as kind of a hard corner. And the other beauty of making a path like this is if I see this and want to correct it, I can always go back here, make a fix, and then click on this and then keep drawing. You 
You can also make this line smaller by just holding down Command and dragging on the anchor point. You can also hold down Command, sorry, hold down Option and break this and kind of line it up to your next curve. Something like that. Um, here I could select this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that out of the selection and just select to the red part of the car here. Now this is obviously way more time consuming, but when it comes to doing like a, you know, really high resolution or uh, client work, often the most of the time that you're going to be spending in Photoshop is making selections. So just kind of get comfortable with it, maybe play some music while you're doing it, listen to an audiobook. But taking the time to do this is what's going to separate your work from amateur's work. All right, there you go. So I've now made my whole selection. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer mask and also throw away this curves because I'm not going to need that anymore. I have two ways of turning this into a mask to get rid of our background. The first is I'm going to go into my just uh, path selection tool here, select my path, right mouse click, and I can go create vector mask. So there you can see we've created a vector mask. The one problem with a vector mask is I can't go into my vector mask and paint additional elements into it or blur some parts of it and leave other parts of it unblurred. So for something like this where everything's in focus, it works just fine and I could do it this way. But my preferred workflow is I'm gonna go ahead and delete this vector mask, go back to our path here. Um, one quick tip here is your work path is kind of your active path. Unless you double click and change the name of this, the next time you start making a path, it's gonna overwrite it. So especially if you've taken a long time to make a path like we just did, make sure you name it here. That way the next time you start making a path, it's not gonna overwrite your work path. Okay. So back to our uh, path here, I'm going to go back onto my path selection tool, select the path, right mouse click, and instead of going to create vector mask, I'm going to go down here to make selection. And here you want to make sure anti-aliasing is turned on, and I like to add 0.5 to the feather radius. So most photos, there's always going to be a little bit of feathering between your foreground and your background. So I find that just adding 0.5 pixels always helps. So there you go, I now have my selection made and with my background, I can just click on the normal create vec or create mask and there you go, I now have my mask and I have my background removed. So that's how you do it with a path. Paths are my favorite method. Um, for making a manual selection. By manual selection, I mean a selection that you're making by hand rather than using the AI tools of Photoshop. But there is one other type of selection that's not a man-made selection, but it's also not artificial intelligence driven. And I wanna show you that next. So let's go to File Open, and we're gonna open this last file here, which is the Tim Peterson file. Let's go ahead and open that. And here we have a rather intricate selection. It's kind of weaving in and out of some clouds. So on the surface, this might become, might be a hard selection to do. So first, let's see how Photoshop does with the AI tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our solid layer here. We'll just make it green. And then I've made my copy here. I'm gonna go to my properties, go down to the quick actions here and say remove background. So there you can get a very good idea of how Photoshop will do. Um, you can see it's got some issues. It's uh, cutting off. If I just turn down the opacity here, 
you can see it's missed some spots um, and it's also cut off some of the branches. So overall, um, you know, this would get you probably 60% there and then the rest you would have to do by hand. But I'm gonna show you a different way. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer mask and that's using channel information. So if we go to our channels here, we can actually click on the red, the green, and the blue. And what I'm looking for is channels that have good separation between the foreground and the background. So here you can see the blue channel has really good separation between the foreground and the background. So that's a good starting point. Now, rather than trying to just copy this channel, I'm actually going to do a trick here. Now, I've seen other YouTube tutorials which go to like calculations or apply image and then use channel information. To me, those are all way too complicated. The way, the far easier way to do this is just go to adjustments and go to your black and white adjustment. And we already know that the blue information is good, so I'm going to pump that to the top and then take all my other channels and pump them down. I'm gonna leave the cyan up as well because that is kind of working with the blue there. So then all the others I'm gonna turn down and you can right away see that I almost have a nice black and white mask separating my foreground from my background. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm using a layer to create a mask that I'm then gonna turn into a mask. So I'm just creating my black and white. So next, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna run an image adjustment curve on it. And what I wanna do here is I wanna take the whites and you can see that there's some uh, kind of gray information in the whites. So I'm gonna just put this until that gray information is gone. You can see that's made that sky almost a pure white. And here you can see we have a lot of dark grays. So I want all those dark grays to be white. So I'm gonna push those to about there. And you can see that that's taken all those dark grays and made them black. Now we still have a few issues here, but I'm just gonna use my various tools here, either my paintbrush with black and white or my lasso tool to get rid of this. So first I'll start with the lasso and just kind of get the brip broad big stuff here. I'm going to go in here and just take everything that should be black in this tree so all the way down to here. And the plus is I have very good separation on my edges which is always the hardest. So now with my default colors of black and white I'm going to do option delete to fill that with black. And the other thing I can do here because I know I have a nice edge I can actually go to my magic wand tool and just click on the white areas here that I want to remain white. So I've now selected all the areas that I want to remain white. And this as well. And then I can go to select invert and go back to my paintbrush and with my black brush just paint out the areas here that should be make sure this is on normal just paint these areas that should be black okay and then I can drop my selection with command D and let's go ahead now I'm going to turn this into a mask so to do that I'm just going to click on hold down command and click on RGB then go ahead and make a copy of this layer bring it up here and then here because I have my sky selected rather than my subject if I click on the mask what it's going to do is it's actually going to hide my tree rather than removing my background. A quick workaround for that is just hold down option when you click on this and it's going to invert your mask when it creates it. So here you can see I now have my tree well cut out from the background. I don't have any sky left over inside of it. And I really have a nice separation there. I guess we've just missed this one tiny spot here. 
Let me just go in here, kind of select this with my lasso tool here. And fill that with black, and voila. So there you go, very intricate selection, but we use channel information with black and white to create that mask. And if you understand that a mask is just a black and white layer, you can kind of manipulate your image into a mask ahead of time, and then just move that mask information or take that black and white information and put it into a mask. I could even do it here. So I've got this black and white layer. I can do Command A, Command C, and then Option click on this mask, and then do Command V. And you can see I've now pasted that pixel information into my mask. From here, I could obviously go to my image adjustment and invert it, so it's back to how it should be. But you can see now I've taken that mask information and put it in here. So if you kind of understand that, that also opens up the various ways that you can create your mask. So take your image, make it black and white, and then just use paintbrushes and lassos and so forth to turn it into a mask. So this is great if you're starting with a silhouette or anything that's on a strong background. Um, another example might be our squirrel here if we had started this and went to image adjustments black and white we might be able to turn the background really dark and then kind of pump up our other colors like this and then maybe do a curve on this and that could be the start of our mask, right? We already have nice, a nice separation here. Um, we've got a good separation there. So this might be a good starting point. And then using the lasso and our other paintbrush tools, we can just work toward making this truly black and white. So if you understand that a selection is simply black and white, color information or black and white information on a layer, then you understand how these things can all kind of work together and how you can take any information that's in your image and use that inside of a mask. So hopefully that makes sense. But you can see here, we can even work kind of using multiple tools here. So I might uh, do select subject in here maybe turn on the radius quite a bit. Let's go to K. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then go back in here and use that to fill this with white. And look at that. I'm already at least 90% there in making this mask and removing my background. And that's just by kind of using a combination of tools in Photoshop. So now, I can add a mask, take my layer information here, Command A, Command C, Option click on the mask and Command V. And here, there you can see I'm already well into getting rid of that background. So once you understand the tools, you can kind of use them together to get the mask that you need in order to remove your background. So there you have it. That's how you remove a background in Photoshop. Hopefully you learned some tips, tricks, techniques, and methods that you can use in your own projects. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a comment, leave a like, share this video, subscribe to my channel, and here are some other tutorials that you can check out. I'll see you next time.